Hi -de ho there my lovies welcome back to crazy but not dangerous I'm Shorty Vaughn and I'm so glad to be back in the kitchen you have to excuse my brief hiatus well maybe not so brief just haven't been feeling up to par been kind of puny my apologies but I am glad to be back in the kitchen today glad to have all of you with me sending you out Ooh, great big squeeze of and plenty of smooches yeah Hey, thanks for all of your great comments and your concern and your love and your prayers and everything. It really does help. It helps me get by. Anyhow, got a great recipe today. Let me just tell you, I've been craving pizza like nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, I've been craving pizza like nobody's business. And um, you know what? I'm going to do the best I can with what I've got because that's what I try to do every day. Um pizza I love it it does not love me back I don't really need all that crust all of those calories but I looked in my refrigerator I looked in my pantry I found some things that I need to move on along and I thought well I could make like a chicken pizza crock pot meal bake kind of a thing so I got my handy dandy trusty crock pot out yippee skippy um I do not have my life together so we are going to be cooking on high in my crock pot today i have four lovely chicken thighs in here and they are semi um thawed yeah i told you i don't got my life together but these are going to be fine this crock pot heats pretty fast so i am not worried about it and these chicken thighs are going to be fantastic in there as a matter of fact while we're getting it all together i'm going to go ahead plug it in and get it heating up because yeah we don't got time to spare i gotta get dinner on because i want to watch jeopardy tonight yes please and thank you this was something i found in my refrigerator this was something that i purchased at the dollar store it is a contadina pizza squeeze tomato uh sweet tomato basil pizza sauce yeah comes in a squeeze bottle and, and you just and, and you know be like you could make um english muffin pizzas real fast with this if you wanted to or you know real easy to put on a gigantic pizza at home this tasted delicious and but you know what after we made a pizza we still had some left and i'm not sure how long this is going to be um good for so moving on along not getting any younger or better looking neither am i all right so i am going to go ahead and put this pizza sauce right on top of my chicken here just like if i was going to be having a pizza want some great you know protein want some great sauce all the things yes please and thank you come on squeeze on out of there there we go. Okay. Get that all covered. How many ounces is this? Okay, this was a 15 ounce. So I'm guessing it's probably got about 10 ounces of that pizza sauce. Or if you don't have this, just use the little can. Hey, if you're lucky enough to have fresh pizza sauce that you make, you know, something in, you know, canned or something from the freezer or what have you, Go for it, baby. I'm not going to say no. Treat yourself. Okay, so about 10 ounces of that pizza sauce. That's what we look like right now. I've got a little bit of dollar store Italian dressing. I think this tastes good. I like it. And you know, it's a dollar twenty-five over at my Dollar Tree. So yes, please and thank you. I am going to add just a little squeeze of that. Just a little extra flavor. A little something so probably about two ounces of that and let's see got some granulated garlic hello Gilroy I'm gonna go ahead and you know just until my heart says that's enough how are y'all doing what's new and exciting anything good going on what have I missed out on you got news tell me down below well let me tell you what's going on here oh my hummingbirds yeah they grew up they grew up to be big, beautiful males, 
and and they just chase each other all over the front yard in the backyard just here and there and yeah, they're super fun to watch. They're big. They're beautiful. Um, they're a, they're an Anna. That's the, that's their um, species, and they are um, green and kind of a magenta color. They're beauties. They are absolute beauties. So we've enjoyed watching them grow up and get big. It's bulk trash pickup today. Andrew got a lot of things out into his. Uh, out from his shop and out from the garage and out for bulk trash so they come by with a um, big dump truck and then like a front loader kind of piece of equipment and they just scrape it up off of your you know your side driveway and pop it into the truck and away it goes takes away all the things got some onion powder just putting it in there got some parsley flakes because you know, that's how I say I love you, is with some parsley. Yep, fresh, dried, whatever you got, whatever you're feeling. I'm gonna put plenty of that in there. Absolutely. Now I have these tomatoes. Let me tell you about these tomatoes. Is that they are good. They didn't have any mushy spots. They had no mold, but they were too soft to be delicious on a sandwich. Um, but not, yeah, they weren't bad, just not terrific on a sandwich. So I went ahead and just quartered these up into pieces. This was a nice Roma tomato. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that right in there. Yep. Just moving it on along before it dies on the vine. I paid for this stuff. I'm going to use it all up. Bulk trash pickup today. Absolutely. I also have this green bell pepper and it is a little bit wrinkly. It is not its best self. I have not been cooking um, really much at all. We've had a lot of canned soup and um, I did not go grocery shopping last week. I didn't even get delivery. Andrew went out and he bought three salad kits, two gallons of milk and, and, and that was it. And he says that's not much of a video. I said, okay, baby, and then, you know, we've just been making do with what we've had here at the house and what have you. Going to put that bell pepper right in there. I'm going to use about half of it. No, I think I'll use it all because, I yeah, we want to move this one on along. Yeah, I'll use it all. Treat ourselves. So this is going to have the protein. This is going to have the veg. It's going to be all in one. You could add pasta to this. If you need a if you needed a carb, yeah, you could add a pasta to this. I wouldn't say no, but you know, trying to be good, trying to behave ourselves. So yeah, what do you like on a pizza? You could add it to this. You could add um, olives, mushrooms, anchovies. Yeah, I like anchovies. Andrew doesn't. He's a big crybaby about it. So I'm not putting them on his on his chicken pizza. Um, crock pot meal here but uh, yeah if you like anchovies go ahead and put some in um, if you didn't have if you didn't have the pizza sauce and you wanted to do barbecue sauce in there like a barbecue chicken pizza hot diggity yes please and thank you now I'm just giving these a rough little chop up and I'm gonna just throw them in there it doesn't really matter how you're cutting your um, veg yeah um, Gordon Ramsay, Paul Hollywood, they're not coming to dinner tonight. And if they do, they show up. We'll come on in, honey, and have some of my crock pot meal. I'm sure they would be delighted. All right. There we go. You know what? I think we're going to need some red onion, too. That sounds good to me. I knew I was forgetting something. I had this little tiny bit of red onion. It is not much. It, yeah. But you know what? It's still going to be delicious in there. Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on in there. Yes, please, and thank you. All right. Olives, mushrooms. What do you like on your pizza? If I got a pizza, if we called, you know, the pizza, the pizza joint, not my favorite pizza joint, if we're talking about our local mom and pop shop is undoubtedly Sardella's. 
they're also extremely expensive. If we're talking about like a chain, um, I love the Hungry Howies and it is right across the street because they have the seasoned crust and, and I like that a lot. Okay, there we go. We've got this all in there. It looks, it looks pretty darn good. It's got all the stuff. Okay, I've got that puppy on high. It has plenty of liquid in it. Oh, I know what I forgot. I know. Come on, brain. Kick into high gear and remember, you forgot what I came over here for. I can't believe it. I want three steps and can't remember. Do you ever do that? I walked three steps over to the spice rack, and by the time I got over there, I couldn't remember what I was looking for. Anyhow, I need some Italian seasoning. And this has got basil and um, oregano and a little bit of parsley and some rosemary and just all the good things. Yep, that's going to be fantastic. I love it. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think I am. Okay, so that was super simple. That's what I like, like about a crock pot meal. Super simple, super easy. Put the lid on, there we go. Now I'm gonna speed this up because, yeah, I don't have my life together today. So I'm gonna speed this up by going ahead. I'm gonna put these pot holders on there to keep the heat in. I learned that from my friend, um, Bev over at Half Acre Homestead. She does that, gives your um, crock pot a little jump start. Won't hurt a bit. So that is gonna be our pizza flavored chicken crock pot meal. Um, there we go, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna get cleaned up here and then I'm gonna come back with a little story for you. Yeah, it's a little story. It's pretty interesting. A little little bit of Arizona history. Yay, hooray. And then we're going to let this do what it does on high for the next four hours. I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like, how I'm going to serve it up. But yeah, what would you add? What do you like on your pizza? I like the everything pizza, the garbage pizza with everything on it, including jalapenos because you know we like it spicy over here. Um, what do you like on your pizza? Do you, yeah, I'll even take just plain cheese, but you know, this is how we're going to go for right now. And then one hour before, um, Jeopardy, I'm going to add one more thing to it. Just the finishing touch, because I know you're thinking to yourself, where's the cheese shorty Von? Yeah, we're going to add the cheese and, and I've got something. I've got something delicious over in my freezer just waiting for us. Yay, great. All right, what I want to tell you about is Papago, the Great Papago Escape. So Papago Park, as it's known now, is in the center of town. It divides Scottsdale to the east and Tempe to the south, Phoenix to the west. It's a beautiful area. It's where our zoo is. It's where our um, botanical garden is. It's got great hiking and beautiful big red rocks. And it's just a very lovely area of town. Just picturesque. If I can find a free copyright free image of Papago Park, I'll insert it here looks very similar now to it as it did in 1944 that's when this story starts so in 1944 during world war ii the papago area was papago camp and it was a prisoner of war camp for um prisoners mostly nazi u-boat um prisoners taken shipped across the country in uh by train and then housed until you know the end of the war here in Arizona home to some of the most intelligent 
some of the most dangerous and, and notorious uh, prisoners of war. So these Germans, these Nazi Germans are in this camp and um, this camp was different than a lot of other camps because the prisoners were not made to work. So they could volunteer to go work in nearby cotton fields. Yeah, we grow cotton in Arizona. Yeah, ever heard of Pima cotton? Yeah, that's because we grow it here. Our Pima indigenous people grow it. Anyhow, they could volunteer to go work in the cotton fields to, you know, escape boredom, but they were not made to work. And it was like a very typical, you know, prisoner of war camp, barbed wire, towers, what have you. And this camp housed over 3,000 um, German Nazi prisoners of war. So, um, because they were very intelligent and very um, bored, um, they decided that they were going to plan a great escape. Absolutely. So, they had requested gardening tools to build a volleyball field to help escape boredom. They're going to have like a volleyball league. And, and the um, provost marshal uh, agreed to allow these prisoners to have some simple gardening tools so that they could build, build their volleyball tour uh, field. So um, they're building their volleyball field and what have you. They're making little improvements around the camp and, you know, some beautification projects and what have you. And unbeknownst to the um, camp, you know, personnel that they had in the bathhouse started digging a tunnel under the camp, yeah, to escape. And so they were using these garden tools that they were building their volleyball courts with um, in, in between to dig this tunnel. And at first when they're digging this tunnel, they're flushing dirt down the toilet. Well, that didn't work so great because you know, you really shouldn't, oh, oh you shouldn't be flushing dirt down the toilet. Not even now, but certainly back not in the 40s. Anyhow, so they were flushing the dirt down the toilet, then that wasn't working. So they started filling their pockets with dirt uh, as they're leaving the bathhouse and as they're roaming around the camp and going to their brand new built volleyball courts, you know, displacing the dirt out of their pockets and what have you. Nobody seemed to notice. It sounds like something right out of Hogan's Heroes. It actually was um, inspiration for a lot of the shenanigans that went on on the show Hogan's Heroes. Anyhow, so they dug a tunnel 178 feet long with a six foot vertical shaft. And the plan was to get under the camp down to the canal. Now we have a canal system that goes all throughout Arizona. It's how we transport water um, that we collect in our high countries and different watersheds so that we can irrigate fields, so that we all have drinking water. So I live near the canal. The canal's right out back. Anyhow, so they were to get from the camp underneath the fence and to the canal. Once they got on the canal, they were going to take the canal out to the Salt River. Now here's the thing about rivers in Arizona. Rivers in Arizona are very unpredictable, especially the Salt River, because parts of it flow very fast and furious. Some parts flow very um, little, and then there are some parts that are just dry, and you'll go four or five miles, and it'll pick up again. You just never know. And if you come during a rainy season, you may think that that river is flowing very, very well, and it might be for a day or two, and then it might dry up again. Um, so they did not know that the Salt River was going to, you know, dry up. So they constructed a collapsible raft 
out of bits of wood and rubber and whatever that they could find miscellaneous trash around the camp and they built this collapsible raft they take it through the tunnel on the night of december 23rd 1944 25 officers these nazi officers are going to make a, a break for it so they get their raft they've got their rationed food supplies they're making a break for it they're going down to the river and they go for a couple of miles and then you know they hit a dry spot yeah they hit a dry spot no more water in the river they abandon the raft they're mad at each other and they decide to go their own way some people just went back to camp because it gets very cold here in the desert even though you may have daytime temperatures in december heck 70 maybe even 80 degrees at nighttime back then it would not be uncommon for it to get below 32 degrees so some went back to the camp some took off but the plan was to take the salt river to the gila river to the colorado river which would then empty into um you know uh the the, the gulf of mexico and then from there you know argentina here we come or what have you Anyhow, all, fifth, all 25 of these Nazi U-boat officers were um, captured. It took less than a month to capture all of them. None of them made it especially far. Um, the unfamiliarity with the terrain and uh, living in Arizona, um, you know, kind of thwarted their plans, but it was the largest um, escape from a POW camp attempted in the United States during World War II. Thought that was an interesting little tidbit. I just wanted to pass that all along to you because it did sound very much like Hogan's Heroes and I, I, I like that show. Yeah, my favorite character, um, you know, uh, I like Richard Dawson. Yeah, I have a huge crush on Richard Dawson. God rest his soul. I think he's a fun guy. I never got to kiss him, but I would have would have given him a little smooch rooney You know that's true. Yeah. So, waterways in Arizona are very unpredictable. Um, it's either dry or it's flooding, and it doesn't take much for it to flood. Now, when I was a kid growing up, we lived on a dirt road, and crossing our dirt road, we had three washes that Melissa and I had to get to get through to get to our house my dad couldn't come pick us up because the washes when it would rain would flow so quickly it would wash your car away and but we had to get home so what do you do so what we did was if it was raining and the washes were flowing really fast we couldn't you know couldn't trip trek through it um Everyone had a bobbed wire fence. So you had three tiers of bobbed wire. And um, bottom tier, middle tier, top tier. So the barbed wire would go over the wash. And it would have banks on either side. So you get on this bank and we get on the bottom rung of the barbed wire. Hang on to the top rung. And then inch ourselves across the barbed wire to the other, you know, bank of the wash. And then you were in like Flynn. We only had to do that three times to get home. Anyhow, so yeah, it's either flooded or it's completely dry and, and you never know what you're gonna get. And the Nazis, well, you're wondering about their punishment. So Americans, allies that were captured um, and taken POW, were often executed by the Nazis. However, none of these escapees were executed um, for attempting to escape. They were put on bread and water rations for the number of days in which they were missing from the camp and that was their punishment. And um, yeah, so um, treated pretty fairly though. I don't want to live on bread and water, that's for sure. Papago Park, like I said, it's now a park and um, it's just a beautiful area of town. 
it you can look out over the city and see the hustle and bustle it's near ish the airport so you can stand up there and you know look out over the valley and see everything from you know the freeways and the airplanes and um you know you can look over and see camelback mountain which really does look like a camel yeah it's interesting I'll get you some photos of Pampago Park and put them right up here. And, um, you know, how good's Heroes? It was a great show. It was a great show. Did you all enjoy it? Did you, did you ever watch? Tell me down below. All right. This has got four hours to go. I keep my eagle eye on the clock. Oh, it's piping hot. It's cooking already. It's going to be delicious. I just know it. Be back in a few minutes. All right, well, we've got about an hour before dinner. I've been napping on the couch, and this smells amazing. It's nice to wake up to some dinner that's almost all ready to go. Smells fantastic. Looks terrific. Let's tip it up for you. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, smells fantastic. Plenty of sauce. Those chicken thighs are good oh they're tender and done yeah they're ready we're ready for prime time but not yet not quite yet because you know what we're missing we're missing the cheese you gotta have cheese on a pizza well you know i guess unless you're lactose intolerant and then you probably have fake cheese got a little bit of this fresh mozzarella just a little bit left and I'm gonna go ahead and slice this up I'm gonna go ahead and pop that right inside that's gonna be my delicious melty cheese element and move this on along I got this on discount over at my Kroger a few weeks back and we've enjoyed it for many things and this is just the last little bit and today is the expiration date so we have moved on along all of the things that were going to go wonky in my refrigerator and now I'm going to put the lid back on this get to another look there we go it's all topped with cheese now I'm going to put the lid back on this just let that get all good and melty. Yeah, nothing's going wonky in my refrigerator. I don't have any science experiments. Yay, hooray. Yippee, skippy, and hot diggity. I'm super thrilled. Gonna let this go still on high for about one hour more. Let that cheese get all melty. Let all of that mix and mingle. It's gonna be so good. Smells fantastic. Melissa just came out here and she said to me, smells great. What's for dinner? I said, um, pizza chicken. She said, you mean chicken pizza? I said, no, pizza chicken. Yeah, pizza chicken for dinner. Can't beat that with a stick. Um, we're also going to have a small side salad to go with that. Make sure you're getting your fruits and veggies and it's important. Okay, so four hours on high. That cheese is all melty and delicious. This is how our dinner looks tonight. This is Andrew's plate. He's having two of the chicken breasts because he's worked so hard today. He's worked up a real appetite. Plenty of the tomatoes, the peppers, the onions, that cheese. Yes, please, and thank you, herb spices and the delicious sauce. I think that that's a delicious looking meal. Yay, hooray, yippee, skippy. All right, my lovelies, be good, be careful, look both ways. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. Bye now.